welcome to your Daily Dose of Sunday School, episode 121. I had to fix, yesterday's number was messed up too, so this should be right. We're on chapter 9 of R.C. Sproul's Reason to Believe. Why does God allow suffering? So we looked at three uh, unbelieving responses to suffering yesterday. We'll look at one more today, and then... That'll lead us into the Christian response. Existentialism. Existentialism is the worldview that says that our existence precedes our purpose. So you exist, in other words, you exist in this world and you have no purpose. Your existence precedes your purpose. And so what do you do? You have to basically make up your own purpose. And this is, I don't know, the majority of Hollywood movies. There's kind of, it's purposeless, but you're going to be true to you. Whatever you decide that you is about. (laughs) Whatever you decide you are about. Um... You're going to be true to you. And um, that's what existentialist says. So, you know, I I would say one thing for the existentialist is as you're suffering, not to conform. Don't, Don't sacrifice the true you when you suffer. That would be one, one of the responses of the existentialist. And the existentialism emphasizes the um, courage in the face of meaninglessness. So, there's no meaning, the world is absurd, and yet, you're brave enough to get up every day and be you. Now, is there any reason why you should do that versus just giving in and committing suicide and existentialism? Well, not assuming that expresses yourself well, I don't know, but it's it's pretty bleak. You say you've got you've got no purpose, suffering has no purpose, but um you do you. That's kind of what it comes down to. For the Christian, we never see suffering as meaningless. So suffering has a higher purpose. Uh, When Jesus healed the man born blind, his disciples asked him, this is John 9, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, it was not that this man sinned or his parents, but that the works of God might be displayed in him. So there's a higher purpose of the glory of God of, we have to keep in mind what that means as Christians. Um, that glory of God results in the satisfaction of humans. So it's not, don't think of that as being one-sided. There were people there, including the man born blind, who would see this miracle and glorify God and understand the purpose of life, find meaning. So those things go hand in hand. Now, in this case, this man born blind, it wasn't because of anybody's sin. Um, but it is sometimes. We, we sometimes do suffer specifically for sins we've committed. We see that in the life of David multiple times. We look at Luke 13. Here's an example. Jesus gives, has <clears throat> kind of confronted with suffering that people are aware of. And, you know, the assumption is, you see these people suffering, and it seems so senseless, they are probably they probably are big sinners, and God's just getting them for it. Uh, which was kind of the assumption that Job's friends made. So, Luke 13, verses 4 and 5, they're talking about this tower that fell and uh, killed 18 people. 
And Jesus says, do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others who lived in Jerusalem? Do you think these guys were worse sinners? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. So for the Christian, yes, suffering, all suffering arises from the reality of sin in the world. Um, but we cannot assume correlation between suffering and obedience, that, it, that it's necessarily line or disobedience, that it's necessarily goes hand in hand. In fact, Christians might suffer more because they have to take up their cross daily. They're following Christ and suffering. On the other hand, the unbeliever might suffer more because he's making more choices that don't correspond to the, the way God has made the world. Um, but I think ultimately the suffering does fall on the side of the Christians, especially where the gospel is going in new places and we see more martyrdom and, and things like that. Um, now, there, with God, there is never injustice. No one can say, well, why did you let that tower fall on me? In fact, the question Jesus would ask is, why doesn't the tower, why don't all the towers fall on all of us? Because we're all sinning all the time. Um, so we can never accuse God, but that doesn't mean there's not horizontal injustice where I say, well, why didn't you build that tower better? Better You were, you were careless. You should have done a better job. Um, or, you know, if someone does something terrible to us and we ask for, uh, we ask God to make it right. Um, ultimately, the meaning we find in suffering is from knowing God. If you don't know God, then you won't find meaning. You'll make up a meaning for a few years and then you'll be gone and, and um, you'll have increased suffering in hell. Job, he wanted a word with God and he found meaning to his suffering in the face of God. He said, I have heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now my eyes see you. Therefore, I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes. You see, a lot of times Christians assume that we suffer to learn a lesson. Like if I could just skip ahead and learn the lesson, um, then I would maybe could skip the, skip the suffering. Let's hurry up to the lesson part. Oh, I passed the test. So let's move on to the next module. No, um, we suffer following Christ. We suffer, as we see here, as a way of drawing near to God and him drawing near to us. It's like if I send a bunch of Marines out into a difficult situation, I might be training them, but I also might be making them, um, you know, cohere more as a unit. I might be building bonds of unity between them so they can learn to operate as a team. And so we, we draw near to God in our suffering. Um, Romans 8.17 on the topic of you know, taking up our cross. If, chil uh, if children then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ provided, we suffer with him in order that we may also be glorified with him. So ultimately, no suffering will be wasted because God will transform that suffering. Uh, 2 Corinthians 4, 16 uh, through 18, God will transform that suffering into good for us at the end. So I think it's worth reading. So we do not lose heart, though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day for this this slight momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. As we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen, for the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal.